Hey, what do you think of that, Paul? Hey, that's very nice, isn't it? It is very nice. Oh, I like that. Look at that candelabra. Oh. <coughs> me, 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 me. Oh, no, that's wrong. Something out there. Can I get it? <laughs> What's that? It's a bowl of fruit, isn't it? That's no good. I think it looks good. We're doing a programme on music. Everything from opera to orchestral. And back again. Yeah, and top-class musicians don't have bowls of fruit on their lids. How do you know what top-class musicians have on the pianos? I happen to be on first-name terms with one of the greatest musicians in this country. And he definitely does not have fruit on his lid. OK, then. Who is this top-class musician you're on first-name terms with? Me. Silly me. I should have known. Sort those instruments out, Barry. Oh, good morning. We have a stimulating programme for you today, all about music. We're going to cover the whole spectrum of serious music, from orchestral to operatic. And back again. Yes. And what better place to start than to take a look at all the different kinds of instruments? Paul, what shall I do about the xylophone? Um, answer it. Tell her whoever it is I'm very busy and I'll call back later. He hasn't a minuet to himself. So let's take a look at all the instruments in a modern orchestra. Now there's woodwind and brass, violins, a cello. Pardon? A cello. Bless you. And here they all are. Where's all the instruments? I couldn't get them up the stairs. Oh. Only this penny whistle. Oh. That's not a penny whistle. Isn't it? No, this is an alpenhorn. Oh. Yeah, it's very good. What happens, you see, you're blowing this end here. Yes. The sound comes all the way down there. And it comes out at the little piece at the end, like that. Yeah. Yeah, I'll show you. Go on, oh. watch it. <laughs> well, as you can see, making music can be quite difficult. But most of these sounds can nowadays be reproduced on a modern keyboard. I've got one of those. I keep my keys on it. Look, on these little hooks here. Right now, let's go over to a special display by the world-famous Birkenhead Bell Ringers. Oh. They're famous campanologists. What, tents and that? Bells. Oh, bell tents. Beautiful. But there is also another side to campanology. Caravanning? No, the ringing of church bells. Oh. And here to demonstrate are the brothers Chuckle. Very nice.
Is it that time already? It's time for Armchair Theatre. There was no doubt who was boss. It wasn't Mr Hayhurst, the head teacher. It wasn't even Loopy Latchford, the deputy head. Who really ran the school was Mr Stebbings, the caretaker. Now, Mr Hayhurst was strict, but Mr Stebbings, well, he was something special. Everybody was scared of him, even Mr Hayhurst. You haven't been sticking pins in my notice board, have you, Mr Hayhurst? No, Mr Stebbings. But of course, Mr Stebbings, notice boards are meant for notices, you know. Meant for notices? Vandalism, that's what it is. Making holes in school property. Will we get who let things carry on like this? That was how Mr Stebbing was. If the rule said, don't damage school property, nobody damaged school property while he was around. Another thing about Mr Stebbing was that nobody knew his first name. So it was always, yes, Mr Stebbing. Quite right, Mr Stebbing. The school was presenting a musical for the parents that evening. It was a play about life in Liverpool long ago, and everybody in the school had a part in it. Except Mr Stebbings. Anyway, after the morning break, when the kids were coming back in from the schoolyard, Mr Stebbings was watching them file past, when he suddenly saw a poster on the floor by the notice board. He pounced. Litter! I'll teach him. They drop litter in my corridor as if it was their own homes. And he stops to look at the paper. School show, act one. Scene one now begins with the water carrier song sung by Launcelot. Sung by Launcelot? What no one, no one in the whole school knew was that Mr Stebbing's first name was Launcelot. I'm singing the opening song, the water carrier song, and I've got my own bucket and mop. So at dinner time, he finds out who's been singing the song in rehearsal, and it's a kid named Martin Walsh, who's always sucking his thumb. Oi, Walsh, I want a word with you, boy. You want me, Mr Stevens? There's been a change of plan. I'll be singing that song of yours. There's been a notice official to prove it. You, Mr Stevens? That's right. Well, Martin didn't know what to think. First of all, he couldn't believe his luck. He'd been dreading this show ever since Loopy Latchford told him the costume he was wearing. Tights. Purple tights. But on the other hand, he couldn't really believe that the school caretaker would be in the play. Until the performance, that is. All the parents are gathered in the school hall trying to look comfortable in the chairs from the infants' class and saying nice things to each other. I hope your Sandra doesn't forget her lines like last year, Mrs Johnson. Very nice of you to say so, Mrs Clegg. Wasn't it last year your Johnny knocked over the scenery? Suddenly, the lights go down, the curtain opens, and there's Mr Stebbings in purple tights. And, of course... It wasn't his fault that just as he stepped forward to sing, he slipped. Because he'd had no rehearsal. Hey! Of course, it was just sheer bad luck that he dropped the bucket, showering the whole of the front row, including the mayor and the mayoress, with water. Everyone thought this was hilarious, except Mr Stebbings, who looked so serious, no one dared laugh out loud. But Martin and Mr Hayhurst laughed quietly to themselves. After this, no one would ever be quite so scared of Mr. Launcelot Stebbings. Barry, hurry up with those costumes. Our guest singer will be here any time now. Just come in. Oh, there you've got them. Great. Can you give us a hand? Yes. Come here. Correct. Hey, they're very nice, these, aren't they? They are very nice. Yeah. <laughs> hey, they're lovely ones. Do something with these. Yes. Right. Now, did you get the sheet music? Barry? Where's he gone? Barry? Did you get the sheet music? I did even better. Huh? I got two pillowcases and a duvet cover. <sighs> Never mind. We'll have to make it up as we go along. Oh, oh the phone. <coughs> Hello? 
Oh, no. Oh, no. More bad news. What's that? The guest singer can't make it. Oh, no. I'll tell you what, what, you'll have to do it. Can I sing? No, but you'll have to do it anyway. Come on, we'll just get some more costume for you. All right. Over here. Yeah. I think this'll do. That should fit you nicely. There you are. Get those on in a flash. OK? Right. Opera is a wonderful thing. There's been some marvellous music written for it. Carmen, La Traviata, La Boheme, Madame Butterfly. Hey, how do I look? <laughs> well, what can I say? <laughs> yeah, I was just telling everybody about operas, like the Barber of Seville. Oh, I've seen him on Jim Will Fix It. Oh. Jimmy Savile. I never saw his barber, though. Oh, Seville's in Spain. Oh, like on your holidays. I went to Spain. Forget it. I can't. I enjoyed myself. Anyway, look, you're going to be singing Figaro, right? Oh, right. You do know it, don't you? Of course I do. It's an Italian biscuit. Figaro. Very tasty. No, look, just go through there and stand on your mark. Who's Mark? Your mark. No, Mark went home. I'm Barry. No, your mark on the stage. Oh, like a stage name. Oh, you don't know anything, do you? I know my name's Barry. Get through there. Come on. Eh? Go on, get through. Get on that stage. Oh, OK. Go on, on the stage. There, look. That's your mark. Oh, there. Yes, now just stand there and sing when I tell you. Right. I'll have to get these lights sorted out. Hey. Oh, you just sing. Right. Figaro. Figaro here, Figaro there, Figaro here, Figaro there, Figaro here, Figaro there, Figaro here. Higher, please. Figaro here, Figaro there, Figaro here, Figaro there. Take it higher. Figaro here, Figaro there, Figaro here, Figaro there. Take it right up. Figaro here, Figaro there, Figaro here. No, 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 no. Hold it. Bring it down again. Thank you. Figaro. Figaro. Figaro, 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 Figaro. Hold it. Figaro. Yes. Oh, well, as you can see, we've been rehearsing an excerpt from The Marriage of Figaro. So it's over to you, Burrito. Oh. Are you all right? No, you told me to hold it, now my throat hurts. Well, can you sing? No. Oh. Well, in that case, let's go over to the Philharmonic Hall for an excerpt from the last night at the proms. Hey, I've been there. Have you? What happens? Yeah, it's at the end of the summer when they turn the illuminations off at the seaside. No, it's not. Nick. Over to the McChuckle Brothers at the Philharmonic Hall. Hey. Hey, you're in for a musical treat. Hey, you can. Hey, come on, you can. Hey, you see. Hey, you see. A Philharmonic, you see. Hey. Hey, you can. Put the hat. Here, put the hat. Here, put the hat. Here, put the hat. Here, put the Let's see now, eh? Hey, hey, right, hey, 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 about the young musician. One of the best ways of starting out in music is the recorder. And we're very lucky today here to have with us a former soloist with his recorder. And of course, many of these young musicians later on in life go on to greater things. Some of them even take up music professionally and join symphonic orchestras. Now, we're very lucky indeed today to have with us the Chucklephonic Symphony Orchestra, who are going to play for you part of Tchaikovsky's 1812 Overture. Which is just after six. What is? I mean, New Digital. Look. Oh, 1812, you're yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. And here they are. No, they're not. What do you mean? They've split up. Musical differences. They've all gone on to pursue solo careers. Oh, dear. Uh, well, in that case, it is, in fact, of little-known fact that the 1812 Overture was actually written for just two people. Brilliant. <laughs> yes. Hey. I'll be the conductor. You haven't got a bus. Oh, I don't need a bus. I'll run. I'm very fast. Oh, he's a lightning conductor. Sorry. And here is your soloist, Barry Chokolovsky. Let's get this stool. Got the stool. 
<clears throat> and here we have the 1812, or just after six, overture. <clears throat> and now we have a short excerpt from the 1812 or just after six overture. Of course, the same piece of music would sound totally different played on a different instrument. And we are going to demonstrate the same piece of music played on the instrument it was written for. Barry will now demonstrate. That's not right, is it? Well, it doesn't sound bad. 